Sunday morning, December 1st. Uh, normally, 9 a.m. we have the flights to South Pole from McMurdo, where we are here. But that's really normally. Anything could happen. McMurdo certainly doesn't feel as much as South Pole in terms of isolation and in the middle of nowhereness. It's a mix between a mining town and a student's town or a student campus. But it, you know, it has a lot of amazement when you get there for the first time. Well, I don't know if you can notice, but I'm actually retracing my steps from just five minutes ago. Turns out our flight is not going after all. At least the good news, that means we get to go on top of Observation Hill and take in the beautiful view. John, what time is it? Let me check, this is my watch. Uh, yeah, it's 9.20. Thank you, son. <laughs> so we're gonna go up to here, up there. We should have a really nice view of all of Mactown and the ice shelf. It's actually a really beautiful day. It's not always like this in McMurdo. You can have quite overcast days. Although I'm wearing this big red jacket, it was quite warm. So now we're getting to the top of Observation Hill. The view that we're starting is looking pretty much north, actually. Pretty sweet view. Sweet ass. We're looking north towards Mount Erebus and towards the ice shelf. So this is permanent ice that's flowing from the continent. And there's two permanent skiways there. There's one called Pegasus and one called Willy Field. And Willy Field is a big deal because that's also the direction where they have the balloon launches. So they have a place that is dedicated to launching these long duration balloons that circumnavigate the whole Antarctic continent. And supposedly, if everything goes well, lands right there next to McMurdo again. And then as we turn around, now we're looking towards the Royal Society range, which is a big range of mountains that you have to cross if you want to go towards the South Pole, that's the direction of the South Pole. Now we're looking at the sea ice, and this sea ice will eventually melt towards the heat of the summer in December, January, and icebreakers will be able to come through and resupply McMurdo. Now we're looking towards McMurdo, which looks like a relatively ugly mining town. All of the buildings are different colors. And now we've turned all the way around, and we're back looking towards the north, and towards the north there's this really big, really impressive mountain, which is actually a volcano, and it's Mount Erebus. And if you look carefully, you can see a little plume of smoke on the top of Erebus, because it's actually active, and it just looks like a big frozen volcano. Wow, this is cool, it's in four languages. There's actually a big cross that marks the top of the hill, and the cross essentially commemorates the sad journey of Sir Robert Falcon Scott, who reached the South Pole a month after Roald Amundsen and unfortunately didn't make it back. So if you'd like to find out more about Antarctica, in particular some voyages in the early 1900s, why not go to my other channel, Objectivity? There we've done some great videos with some great old photos, black and white photos from Antarctica. We'll explain this map and we'll even show you some letters written by Captain Scott. I'm a bit strange like that. Mm -hmm. Is this I'm speculating that that might be his thumbprint. Yeah, well, if he, if he managed to get it in the ink as he was writing, that, that could easily be. So this is Observation Hill, which is a landmark you can see behind. Oh, OK. A whole bunch of uh, sleeping penguins there, I imagine. Uh, yes, you could put it that way. Yeah.